My job now is to introduce to you all our keynote speaker. Dr. Basil Abdul Karim is a Palestinian American physician born and raised in Southern California. For decades now, Dr. Abdul Karim has been seeking relief on behalf of Palestinians and especially Palestinian children through his charitable work. Dr. Abdul Karim is a husband, father of five, an activist, a writer, and one of the founders of Kinder USA, an American nonprofit that works on behalf of disadvantaged Palestinian children. Given the catastrophe in Gaza that has been especially devastating for our children in Gaza, we couldn't have think of someone any better than Dr. Abdul Karim to come and speak to us tonight. So I present to you now, please give me a warm applause, Dr. Abdul Karim, please. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Palestine cannot be properly explained without understanding the history. And over the years, a variety of terms have been deployed to describe what Palestinians have endured since the early part of the last century. Terms like the Nakba, the occupation, ethnic cleansing, a system of apartheid. All of these terms describe some aspect of what has been done and what is still being done to Palestinians by Israel. But for me, as a father and a physician, as I look back at these last five nightmarish weeks, for me, the description that best captures the absolute horror of what the people of Gaza have been subjected to is an acronym, a string of letters, WCNSF. Anyone know what these letters mean? They stand for wounded child, no surviving family. Hospital workers in Gaza coined this term to describe the unsettling phenomenon they were witnessing in their emergency rooms. All of these young children turning up, survivors of the brutal aerial bombardment, turning up alone because their entire families had been wiped out. The thing is, Palestinian families tend to run large. When I was in high school, I remember actually counting out all of my first cousins. And I remember telling my friends, hey, I have over 100 cousins. And people looked at me like I was some sort of alien. But I wasn't. I'm Palestinian. Palestinian families are huge. So my question is, how many Palestinians do you have to kill to end up with a wounded child who has no surviving family? As we all know, many Palestinians have lost dozens of family members in Gaza over the past month. And today in Gaza, no one and nothing are safe from the destruction. One-ton bombs, white phosphorus bombs, more bombs dropped by Israel in a few weeks than the United States military dropped on, on Afghanistan in an entire year. The equivalent of more than two atomic bombs dropped in the first four weeks on one of the most densely populated areas of the planet. And in Gaza, no one and nothing are safe. Not the hospitals, not the schools, not the shelters, not the mosques, not the churches, not the water pipes, the solar panels, not the bakeries, not the refugees who shelter in place, not the refugees who flee south, not the ambulances, not the doctors, not the nurses, not the medics, not their families, not the journalists who record these atrocities, and not their families, not the mothers, not the fathers, and certainly not the children. More than 4,500 children killed in Gaza thus far and counting. In the first few weeks of the bombardment, more Palestinian children were killed in Gaza than the number of children killed in Ukraine during the entire year and a half conflict with Russia. Just imagine that. A few days ago, the UN Secretary General declared that Gaza is becoming a graveyard for children. He also said that the nightmare in Gaza is more than a humanitarian crisis. It is a crisis of humanity. And he's right. This is a test for our collective humanity. That includes the United Nations. And the world is failing. And as we watch this tragedy unfold each day worse than the day that came before, each night more brutal than the previous one, we can't help but wonder, where is the outrage? And why don't these people matter? In Gaza, parents have taken to writing the names of their children in ink on their arms. 
That way, if the family is bombed into oblivion when they sleep, at least maybe the children can be identified afterwards. I think it's also important to remind the people in this hall this evening that the Muslim community of Southern California are no strangers to the struggle for justice in Palestine. Some of the people here in attendance, people my age or older, may recall that MPAC was born during a period of crisis, the Palestinian Intifada or uprising in 1988. I remember the late Dr. Maher Hatut, rahimahullah, with a bullhorn in hand, outside City Hall, leading chants, never again, never again, never again for everyone, and human rights for all, human rights is for all. And I remember one night years ago at a fundraising event for my organization, Kinder USA, Dr. Hatut explained with his trademark empathy and moral clarity why Palestine matters and why the American Muslim community had no choice but to confront this issue head on. We have an obligation to speak up for Palestine, he said. Not because Palestinians are more important than other people. As Muslims, of course, we believe that all human life has value. All human beings are born with an innate dignity bestowed upon them by their creator. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam, the Quran says, we have certainly honored the children of Adam. But as Dr. Hatut reminded the audience that night, we in America have a special duty to speak out because the injustice taking place in Palestine has its roots right here in America. And because the crimes being committed against Palestinians would not be possible without the financial, military, diplomatic, and moral support of our government. Never has this been more clear than today. American Muslims cannot afford to look away. According to a famous authentic hadith of the Prophet wasallam, whoever among you sees evil, let him change it with his hand. If he cannot do so, then with his tongue. And if he cannot do so, then with his heart. And that is the weakest level of faith. We have our work cut out for us. Change isn't going to come easy. Because it's not enough that our government provides the occupation with these weapons. The Israeli occupation and its allies don't even want the public to believe what their own eyes are seeing. And when that doesn't work, when the evidence is too overwhelming, then the propaganda machine kicks in, blaming the victim. It doesn't matter if it's an award-winning Palestinian-American journalist shot in the head, a young female medic executed at the March of Return, a young child killed while sheltering in the shadow of his father. The victim is always to blame and there's never any accountability for the perpetrator. This too has to be challenged. The hard truth is we will never be able to make progress towards justice on the question of Palestine so long as we remain hostage to this dehumanizing narrative, so long as we are unable to confront the network of disinformation, half-truths, and outright lies that dominate most public discussion of this subject. Palestinians are human beings. They're not human animals, or cockroaches, or snakes, or children of darkness, or any of the other despicable genocidal terms applied to them by their oppressors. Don't let anyone gaslight you into thinking that these families being bombed into extinction are somehow deserving of their destruction. Believe the truth of what Gaza is showing the world, and speak out for those people who have no voice. That boy covered with dirt and blood from that video, shaking on an exam table, asking a medic, am I still alive? Am I alive? That little boy is real. And that young girl pulled from the rubber, laid out on a stretcher, asking her rescuers, are you taking me to the mikbara? Are you taking me to the cemetery? That little girl is real, and her nightmare is all too real. Believe your eyes. Don't fall for the lies. That's not justice raining down from the skies. Those are bombs, followed by children's cries. Today in Palestine, entire families die. But they don't really just die, do they? Somebody had to kill them. Entire families have been wiped out, hundreds of families completely erased, their names removed from the civil registry, as if those people never even existed. If you have an iPhone when you have a chance, ask Siri, Siri, what does it mean when entire families are wiped out? When I did that a couple of days ago, 
I got links to a lot of articles in Gaza. I did. Not even Siri can hide the truth. But knowing the truth is not enough, not in this environment. Right now, there is a relentless campaign to ban or vilify any public sympathy or solidarity towards Palestinians. Even now, people in America have lost their jobs. Students are being threatened and harassed on college campuses just for speaking the truth about what we all see happening, just for calling for a ceasefire, calling for an end to death. Some will try to intimidate us and divide us, the pundits and the power brokers, to convince us that we can't win, but we can't let them succeed. Too many lives are at stake. Lastly, I would just say, don't let anyone, however powerful or influential, even people who claim to be friends of justice, don't let anyone convince you that down is up or wrong is right or that human rights are wrong for some people. Never forget, in the words of the late Dr. Maher Hatut, human rights are for all. I just want to say a few words about the organization that I support. Kinder USA is an American Muslim nonprofit founded in 2002 that works on behalf of needy Palestinian children and their families. Kinder is an acronym. It stands for Kids in Need of Development, Education, and Relief. Our name is Kinder USA, a kinder USA. That is our hope. Our website is kinderusa.org. Much of our work in recent years has focused on Gaza because that's where the need has been the greatest, but we do work in other regions as well. Let me say that the humanitarian picture in Gaza, as you all know, as you've all heard, is dire. It's worse than at any point in recent history. In 2012, the United Nations released a special report that concluded that by 2020, Gaza would be unlivable. That report was more than a decade ago, and that deadline passed three years ago. In Gaza, hospitals have shut down. There's no power. There's no fuel. Doctors are operating without anesthesia. Hospitals are overflowing with people who have nowhere else to go. Water and food are running out. People are resorted to drinking seawater and contaminated water. It's possible that many Gaza res residents who survived the bombings, who survived the war, may still ultimately die from starvation, dehydration, or disease due to shortages in proper medicine, nutrition, and clean water. As we speak, there are still bodies strewn across city streets. Stray dogs are feeding on the corpses. There are too many bodies for people to collect because every night brings another massacre. Every single night, you've all seen the videos. We do get a lot of questions at Kinder, people asking how an organization can possibly function in this environment. I can assure you that, alhamdulillah, we, we were able to fund relief projects right at the outbreak of the conflict. We have people on the ground who have been working tirelessly and at substantial risk to themselves to deliver much needed aid, including food. We've also partnered with an Egyptian aid organization to sponsor one of the first relief trucks allowed entry into Gaza. And we have plans to do more of this, inshallah, in the near future. Some of our employees have lost family members, and some of our partners have unfortunately lost employees during the bombing campaign, as of most people in Gaza. When there's a ceasefire, the need will be enormous. I humbly ask you to visit our website, kinderusa.org, and to consider making a donation. We're not a large organization, but that means basically we don't spend a lot of your money on marketing or on fundraising. We run a skeleton staff here in the States. When you donate to Kinder, your money does make an impact. Lastly, I just want to remember, I want us all to remember the children of Palestine and their families and all of the oppressed people in the world in our dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. May he put an end to their suffering. May he allow the people of Gaza and the rest of Palestine to emerge even stronger after this tragedy than before. Amin. Thank you. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.